At this point, we're just using simulated data. But let's take a look at what's required to inter interact with actual hardware. For this example, I have a four-slot compact DAC chassis with two channels of analog input voltage. So we'll go back to our code, and we'll actually delete our generated information, and we'll go to our palette for measurement and I.O. and explore the DAC MEX palette. Here we have what's called a DAC assistant, which is a little unique in that it's not a normal sub-VI. It's what's called an express VI. And we can tell this because when we place it, we're actually going to be prompted to configure the characteristics of this particular function. In this case, I'll specify that I want to acquire analog input values, that I want voltage, and it shows me a list of compatible hardware that's currently connected to my system. In this case, I want channels 0 and 1 from my 9233. And when I click Finish, it's actually going to give me a dialog that allows me to preview data from these channels and set up some basic configuration options. So for this example, we'll just switch the acquisition mode over to Continuous and leave everything else default. When I run it, we can see my inputs previewed there. And when I click OK, this Express VI is actually going to script the creation of the code necessary to do this acquisition for me. You could write this code yourself, or you could actually explore the code that it's generating and modify it yourself. So at this point, we'll go ahead and connect the data output of this Express VI. And you'll notice we again have a working run arrow. So when we return to our front panel and click Run, instead of using generated or simulated data, we're actually using real-world information from these two analog inputs to our system. So to see more about how to build your own sub-VI, customize this particular application, or use any of the sample projects that are provided with LabVIEW, be sure to visit ni.com slash LabVIEW.